tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about waves, how they form, and how you can draw and paint them. We'll revisit the making of How for Surf, a cartoon surfing instruction book that my friend Jeff Pagai and I created when we were in school. I'll show you how to draw a high school wave and do a painting lesson too. All this and more on a totally tubular episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Hawaii's waves are world famous for their power and beauty. But what causes waves? Well, most waves are caused by the weather. And for us in Hawaii, that means storms that form over the Pacific Ocean. The wind from these storms cause waves of water to move across the sea. When the waves reach shallower water, they form a crest and throw over. The Hawaiian style of measuring a wave is from the back. Therefore, a Hawaiian wave that's three feet tall may actually have a face that's six feet tall or more. The direction of the wind affects the shape and conditions of the waves. Winds that blow towards the back of the waves are called onshore winds. They can create choppy or stormy conditions. When we have light or offshore winds that blow into the face of the waves, conditions can be epic. For surfers, waves are a source of exercise and sport. People that spend time in the ocean gain an intimate understanding of waves and know why and how they suck up and throw over and what happens next. Skilled surfers rely on their knowledge of waves to perform at their best. But for many folks, waves and surfing are still a mystery. That's why my high school friend, Jeff Pagai and I created the book called How for Surf. We started making the book back in high school art class, but the teacher made us scrub it off the desk. So later in life, we put it into book form and published it. It was a big hit for many years because the information in it was basic and easy to understand, especially with the cartoons Jeff and I did. The book is hosted by Palaka Joe, a character I've been drawing since the second grade. The late great Wahine surfer Rel Sun did a beautiful introduction. Alpha Surf shows you the anatomy of a wave and the things you need to know to learn how to ride them. It's written in Pidgin English because both Jeff and I had a hard time spelling regular English. It also includes the unwritten laws of surfing. But of course, those are unwritten. Lastly, we had to pull out all the stops on marketing the book, so we loaded it with all the tricks of persuasion that we could think of. We even included a free surf flick. The Halfa Surf book is currently out of print, but you can download a copy for free on my website, patrickching.com. When we return, I'll show you how to draw a high school wave. And in the tube, if I can do it, so can you. So go surf. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I draw a wave kind of in a cartoon style you know I'll do a couple of waves for you one like kind of a side view and one is going to be more of a wave that's breaking on both sides the reason I say it's going to be kind of a cartoon style is because my lines are going to show the direction that the water is sucking up and throwing over 
Um, just the kind of waves I used to do in high school, so I call it the high school wave. You ready? I'll start with one down here, and that one's going to be like kind of like the side view. And this wave is going to be breaking in the right direction. And when you're looking at it, it looks like it's breaking in the left direction, but when you're surfing on it, it's going in the right direction. So we'll call it a right, okay? And I will make the top of the wave first, okay? Look, you can follow me like this. Um, you folks out there that don't surf or whatever, now you'll be able to draw a high school wave, okay? So we'll make the wave forming and throwing over here, and then this is going to represent the fuge, the white water. And here, you can make the spray starting up here, and come down and get a little thinner right there, and then it hits the ocean and it goes boosh. Okay, so that's the white water. Now for the inside of the wave, like the tube throwing over, we can make the curved lines, and notice that they're all starting to head in the same direction, and as they come out toward the side, they get flatter and flatter, but they still head in the same direction so that right around here it starts to get flat, okay? Now that water is going to throw over also on this side and fuj. And this is what your kids are doing at school when they're in school. Okay, and if you want, you can also make some lines coming up from the bottom there, kind of in the same direction, okay? All right, and if you do want to shade this, you can shade the inner part of the tube here. Look, see what happens when you shave that inner part? Yeah, it makes it look like, you know, it's, uh, it's throwing over, like there's a uh, shade under there. And if you ever get to be in there, there is some beautiful shade. It's, oh, enlightening, exhilarating, everything. If you want to do a little shading up here, you can continue the lines in the direction that the wave's breaking and even bring some up from the bottom too so that the middle part is lighter, okay? Another place for some shadow might be right around here. See that? And if you want to get fancy too, you can make a little reflection of the wave as it kind of, see, it reflects this part right here, kind of a curve and then whoosh, a splash. And right there, you got a right wave throwing over, see? so. If you're in the ocean, you'll start to figure out how the waves suck over and throw over the curve of the waves and what happens when they flatten out when you look at it from different angles. So now I'm going to make a wave that breaks on both sides, okay? You're looking out there and you see the wave breaking. And I'm going to make, the, again, the top line of the wave kind of breaking like that, coming down here and boosh, this is where it's breaking. And we also have it breaking on the other side, okay? If you're a surfer, you're calling those the lefts and those the rights. Even though if you're facing the waves, it's opposite. That's the right, that's the left. When you're on the wave, that is the left and that is the right, okay? And let's make the waves, uh, tell you what, I'll start off with the spray again. Big up here, gets small and then hits the ocean and boosh, okay, explodes. The spray again, tapers off. And what I'm gonna do with the curvature lines is I'm gonna bring them all to right here, okay? They're all gonna meet up right there again. And when they get towards the side of the waves, they're pretty much almost flat, yeah? Let's try that again on this side. Okay, and as they get towards the outside, they're almost flat with this bottom of the wave. Now when it comes over here, this curve continues, look. The next one goes there. And they'll kind of meet up in the middle there. Okay. And if you want to do some shading on that, well, I got a little shading pen. I'm going to make some shadow in the tube area. Okay, especially the deeper, the darker. I'll make a little shadow up here, kind of lines in the directions, and a little bit over here. That's going to kind of leave the center area a little lighter, yeah? Okay, and I can do a little more shadow right there. Again, if I want to be fancy, I can make a little bit of the reflection of the white water, okay? And there you have it, a wave breaking right and an outside wave that's breaking right and left. <laughs> Don't forget your signature.
When we return, I'll show you how to paint the wave. This beach break report. Cartoonist Patrick Ching and Jeff Pagai have combined their artistic talents and sense of humor to produce How for Surf, a comical guide to surfing full of work by both men with the special local taste. For anybody who spent any time in Hawaii, I think they'd uh, enjoy the, the local humor and the, uh, I call it soft core um, pidgin English. You know, it's real easy reading, but it's, they talk just like, just like we talk. Everybody has to just learn, you know, and so this book is, uh, you know, designed to uh, give you a little boost along and uh, illustrate some of the moves that will help you out on the, um, on the water. The book is hosted by Palaka Joe, a cartoon character Ching has been drawing since the second grade. Ching and Pagai met at Wanaloa High School, where they quickly became pen partners and good friends. It was neat to find someone else with the same interest, you know. And, um, you know, I was always drawing stuff, and then I looked over at his paper, he was drawing stuff, and he said, all right. So we, uh, we eventually cleaned off the, the school desk and drew on paper. <laughs> it's that sense of humor that has made this effort come together. And when they get together for a day in the ocean, it's usually filled with a lot of laughs and good times. We're not professional surfers or anything. We're, I guess we call ourselves recreational surfers. In fact, we don't even get to surf as much as we'd like to, you know. But um, we still get wet. The ocean's still healing to us. And we love to see people out there having fun. Even when there's no surf, these two men find ways to have fun. Sometimes lifeguards can get a bit annoyed. But despite all of their antics, there's a message this finished product provides. That's one thing I was hoping this project would encourage people to, like, you know, kids that's sitting next to each other in class, buddies that grew up together. Um, I, I was hoping that, you know, maybe they might get inspired to do, do some project together like this. For Beach Break, Ron Mizutani, Channel 2 News. this beach break report. Cartoonist Patrick Ching and Jeff Pagai have combined their artistic talents and sense of humor to produce How for Surf, a comical guide to surfing full of work by both men with the special local taste. For anybody who spent any time in Hawaii, I think they'd uh, enjoy the, the local humor and the, I call it soft core um, pidgin English. You know, it's real easy reading, but it's, they talk just like, just like we talk. Everybody has to just learn, you know, and so this book is, uh, you know, designed to uh, give you a little boost along and uh, illustrate some of the moves that'll help you out on the, um, on the water. The book is hosted by Palaka Joe, a cartoon character Ching has been drawing since the second grade. Ching and Pagai met at Wanaloa High School, where they quickly became pen partners and good friends. It was neat to find someone else with the same interest, you know. And, um, you know, I was always drawing stuff, and then I looked over at his paper, he was drawing stuff, and he said, all right. So we, uh, we eventually cleaned off the, the school desk and drew on paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's that sense of humor that has made this effort come together. And when they get together for a day in the ocean, it's usually filled with a lot of laughs and good times. We're not professional surfers or anything. We're, I guess we call ourselves recreational surfers. In fact, we don't even get to surf as much as we'd like to, you know. But um, we still get wet. The ocean's still healing to us. And we love to see people out there having fun. Even when there's no surf, these two men find ways to have fun. Sometimes lifeguards can get a bit annoyed. But despite all of their antics, there's a message this finished product provides. That's one thing I was hoping this project would encourage people to, like, you know, kids that's sitting next to each other in class, buddies that grew up together. Um, I, I was hoping that, you know, maybe they might get inspired to do, do some project together like this. For Beach Break, Ron Mizutani, Channel 2 News.
welcome to the wave painting episode. We're going to show you how to build a wave with paint. And we're really happy for this photograph by Terry Lilly of a surfer. And this is a great picture to exemplify the anatomy of a wave. As the wave gets higher, the water turns greener. The wave gets lighter, it gets lit up. The wave also causes a shadow down here, so we get it nice and dark down here. And actually getting it dark over here is going to make our reflections show up even nicer. A lot of times the ocean, you know, right here and up there, the ocean is flat and it's reflecting the colors of the sky. What happens in a wave is that flat ocean stands up and faces you, faces right at you. And when it does that, it shows you what it's really made of. It shows you the deep, dark ocean. Every wave does that. Every ripple does that. Okay, so think of the water as having two planes, a flat plane and a standing up plane. Again, the flat planes reflect the color of the sky and the standing up plane is like a wave. You're looking into the deep part of the ocean, okay? I just did a thin layer of blue because it's a good base color. All of it's gonna get painted over, but having this base color underneath will help the waves get to look a little more solid. I'll get a horizon line with this dark blue, deep blue ocean color. And when making your horizon line, do your best to get them level. You don't want one side higher than the other. That's going to make your viewer feel off balance. It's also a nice idea to get the edge or the horizon line to be a little little fuzzy, blurry. There's the word, blurry. And the white water will come to about there. So now I'm going to start putting the lighter colors of the wave in to the top of the lip right there. I'll actually go all the way across with this. I'm going to get some of this darker green color. This is almost a greenish black color, okay? And I'm going to take it across this wave between the lighter green and this dark blue. And notice that there's a little bit of dark color green on the top of the wave, especially here behind the white water where it's throwing over. We're actually going from a dark green, we're going to blend it into a lighter green, and then even go a little darker green at the very top. We want to keep this part quite dark, start to blend it into the light. That nice wet paint, people love wet paint. Okay, so now I'm gradually fading this dark green into that lighter green. This dark stuff is pretty important. It's hard for people to do you'll probably feel yourself not wanting to make your painting dark. Um, but in reality, the darker you get this bottom part of the wave, the nicer the reflections on top of them are going to be. What happens when the wave throws over, it creates a shadow down here. Yep, you guessed it, the airplane. Okay, so I'm getting it really dark over here. Also, I'm Adding a little bit of blue, this can be a kind of a deep blue, a little bit of a phthalo blue white area. I feel good with a little bit of blue right here. Okay, so that aqua green is turning into a little bit of blue and then going deeper too. And that's a good place to dry your painting and we'll be coming back with the glazes. Well, now that I've got this good and dry, and that's how you need to get it good and dry, okay? But get this good and dry because the next thing we're going to do is a glazing technique. And remember, I'm just basically using two kinds of techniques when I'm painting. I'm either painting wet paint together like we just did, or I'm putting transparent uh, see-through layers over layers that are already done and dry. And this is called a glazing technique. And I'm going to put oil all over this painting uh, because I'm going to be working all over and I just want a microscopic little layer of oil 
Now, if you're working with regular oil paints, you'd be using linseed oil right now. The Genesis paints use thinning medium. And if you're working with acrylic paints, you'd basically just be using clear water. I might just start with a darker sky color. And back there, I'm just gonna kinda skim it across the ocean, you know. Make it look a little fuzzy towards the horizon. Okay, and as we get closer, we might just use little lines like this, okay? A whole lot of just little lines like this. Just kind of rock back and forth. And the whole key to this is as you get closer, these lines, these little gaps between the lines can get bigger. But as they go closer to the horizon, they're going to all kind of bunch together. When you start your foam, um, it's good to start it not pure white. Start it a little purplish blue. It's a little. And we know that the foam is going to be up here on the top of the waves as it throws over. And then when it hits down here, boom, it kind of has a little bit of a splash. Whoosh. Okay, and it comes up kind of high. It's going to be nice to just start to dissipate your spray. So look at where your spray is coming from. What's, what direction it's blowing. Okay, and then you can go and put it in there. Okay, even having a little bit of this light blue color at the very top of it, that's kind of a nice effect too. I'm gonna get some kind of deeper, darker blue reflections here and see how they look if they go up the wave a little bit over here. Okay, these are dark blue reflections. But look how nice they look as they're traveling up this wave. Water. So I'm gonna get basically some white or some light blue. And I'm gonna make the reflections a little heavier right there. Okay. And they'll kind of mirror what's happening over there. There's also a little reflection of that lip there. Okay, and that's what causes more of a bright reflection right here. Right, so now we're starting to really see the anatomy of a wave, yeah? Starting to get a little lighter white as it gets closer to the edge of the wave right here. All right, so I'll start to bring in some brighter white, figure out where I want the sun hitting my white water, yeah? Look how bright it is compared to that, oh yeah. Just telling the viewer where the sun's hitting based on where you put lights and darks. Okay, so I'm gonna take a tiny bit of yellow. Oh, it's gonna be so tiny. There it is. You see it? No, can't see it. So tiny. I don't want my white looking yellow. I just want my white to get warmed up a little bit. And that yellow is gonna contrast against the purpleness of the white that's in shadow. We're talking microscopic amounts of yellow that just give it a little bit of a warm color. Warm meaning like it looks like it's getting hit by the sun, okay? There, okay, we just bring it to life a little bit like that. And lastly, I'm gonna put a little bit of reflection in here. I'm gonna try it with some kind of bluish purple. Yeah, just try and put a little bit of reflection that I see might be happening in here. Mm -hmm. So I can just add some little final touches if I want. And you can do the same. Just add it to taste. Ha. There you have it. <laughs> we built the wave, okay? Remember how we started? We started with the ocean back there. Then we put in our base colors, especially our dark colors, our blues, and a nice dark color down where when you add your reflections to it, the reflections look nice on that dark color. Left the higher parts of the wave to be more aqua green where the sun's shining through it. Realized where the shadows are falling. There's a little bit of shadow up top there as it's throwing over. And of course the shadows down below. I hope you had a good time understanding the anatomy of a wave. I'll catch you on the next one. Aloha.
Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about waves and how to draw and paint them. I'd love to see what you did, so you can send your art to my website at patrickching.com. <laughs> Aloha.